Hello everybody, welcome to Books Up Close. My name is Chris Lloyd, I hope you're doing well and staying healthy. This week we're going to briefly talk about Maud Martha, the novel by Gwendolyn Brooks. Now this novel was first published in the US in 1953, but it was never published in the UK for some reason, and Faber have now reissued it as part of a series of books that they're bringing back, those that were kind of lost to the archive if you like. And this is Brooks's only novel. You might know Brooks primarily as one of the kind of canonical African-American poets of the mid 20th century. Um, you will almost certainly have read or heard her poem, We Real Cool. If you haven't, I suggest you go read it and then listen to her read it afterwards. I'll try and link, I'll try and find a video and link it up uh, at the top of the video. Because when she reads it, she reads it so differently from how I would read it. And there's something really interesting about the musicality of her kind of articulation of the poem. I think it's really interesting and you'll enjoy it. Um, something I get my students to do actually. So Brooks mainly wrote poems. She's written loads and loads of poems, loads of books of those. And this was her only novel in her lifetime. And it's an incredibly slim book. It's about 113, 14 pages. And in its slimness is really part of the point of the book. It's about condensation, really, in the sense of condensing a life into these small fragments or memories or vignettes, whatever you want to call them. None more than a few pages long, really. And Brooks, in these vignettes, tells the story of Maud Martha, a young black woman living in 1940s Chicago. And each little vignette kind of takes us further through Maud Martha's life as she goes from childhood through to kind of adulthood and uh, marriage and having a kid. And through these moments, we get the kind of textures, the sounds, the feelings of everyday life. There aren't huge moments here, there aren't massive kind of life-changing events, but rather just the kind of slow accretion of daily life. But because Brooks is writing it, everything is charged so amazingly through the language, through the tone, through the rhythm. Some people have called this style kind of poetic, which I don't fully know what that means in terms of prose, right? This is prose, but it has some of the rhythm the feeling, the musicality that Brooks's poems do. I guess that's one way you could put it. Um, I'll just read the opening just so you get a sense of that. And this is kind of part one description of Maud Martha. What she liked was candy buttons and books and painted music, deep blue or delicate silver and the west sky so altering viewed from the steps of the back porch and dandelions. So in those three and a bit lines with really strange grammar is this kind of like crystallization of Maud Martha's kind of worldview of thinking about buttons and books and the sky and flowers and music and all of them are kind of interlinked together it's almost kind of synesthetic right different kinds of senses affecting one another the and is used quite a lot that Brooks kind of joins together clauses with the and which you might kind of call a called parataxis if you want to get fancy um but the idea of just like joining clauses together rather than using because or you know any of those kinds of joining words rather you're just kind of like building clause after clause after clause and it and it has this accumulative effect or cumulative effect right of linking one thing to the next but not putting them in a hierarchy not putting them in order not saying one thing is because of the other thing but rather they're all just interrelated and i think there's something really clear about the prose that Brooks uses to evoke that stuff. In the second chapter even, there's a great opening. The openings are always really interesting and the endings are quite elliptical and kind of open. But two is called Spring Landscape Detail. Even that is interesting. The school looked solid, brownish red brick, dirty cream stone trim, massive chimney, candid, serious. The sky was gray, but the sun was making litter little silver promises somewhere up there hinting a wind blew again the sun was making promises the building was candid and serious the way that brooks uses different kinds of words to describe something else right that is the kind of poetic medium where you use unexpected language to describe a thing that is expected and brooks doesn't use complicated language in this book um she uses kind of everyday language, speech, vernacular, whatever you want to call it, to describe this world and to build up a picture of Maud Martha's life. Suffice it to say, I thought this was incredible. I flew through it, but I also had to slow myself way down because each sentence is so beautiful and you want to kind of linger on it. So I would suggest reading at two speeds. I would 
read once quickly <laughs> to get through it and to kind of experience the story and then maybe one more time much slower and lingering on each of the scenes. Um, you could read them as kind of standalone pieces for everything that they evoke. So A, I'm glad this book has been reissued, especially for a UK audience who would probably wouldn't have read it before. B, it's incredible to see this one novel by someone we know for their poetry. But also, it's just a beautiful look at one person's life, the kind of everyday, the mundane, the ordinary. And I think there's some real kind of beauty in that. So I recommend this book highly. I hope you go pick it up. So as ever, please let me know what you think about the book and anything else you're reading. Give me your recommendations. And thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, click the bell for notifications and leave comments below. I love to read your comments and engage with you all. So until the next video, take care of yourselves, keep reading and stay well.